Pithra project here in Snap, which is going to have a go at playing some Morse code for a string that we type in. So let's just quickly make a note as to exactly what the stages are there. I'm just adding a comment here. We've got four stages, I reckon, to that. First stage is going to be to um, check that we can play some Morse code. Uh, step two is going to be to take some str take a string of text and convert it into a list of numbers. So converting convert strings to lists of we call that Unicode, which is a way of representing characters in a string on a computer text characters and others. And then we're going to convert a Unicode character or a Unicode number to Morse code. So that's working from one coding system to another. And the fourth step is going to be to combine those ideas. Now for all of this, we're going to be working one bit at a time, one character at a time or one Morse sound at a time. And it's useful to have a tool to allow us to work through a list or a string like that. There is a programming construct called the for next loop, which allows that sort of counted iteration over a string. You can create or a list. You can create one of these easily enough by just using a variable, but uh, Snap allows us to import a command to do that. So currently in our control palette, we have all of the things, most of which are familiar to us from scratch. But we're going to import some new ones. So I'm going to import tools. Okay, and that should have brought with it a for next loop here. So this goes for i equals 1 to 10. That letter, that variable i is going to count our position as we work through from item 1 to item 10 there. And that's quite useful. So that was under import tools. I'm not going to need that just yet. Okay. We're going to be working with sounds, so we're going to need to make sure that the sound's working as we want it. And I think really the first thing we're going to do there is speed up the tempo of the sound from a rather dirge like 60 beats per minute to a much more happening 500 beats per minute. Now, rather than working just straight into scrap, snap here, I'm going to want to use this Morse code routine later on in my um, program here. So I'm going to create a procedure to play Morse code rather than just writing a program to play or a script to play Morse code here. So if I right click here, then I can do make a block and this is going to be a sound block. And this is going to be something which plays Morse. And that's going to be just a plain ordinary procedure. And that looks fine. I'm going to ask, use an input into that of some Morse code, which is going to be a text, a string of characters there. OK, let's just move that up the screen so you can click the OK button. So you see that I'm working in a, in a window inside Snap now, which allows me to create a program. OK, so we're going, sorry, I wanted an input into that, which was going to be my Morse code. Um, and that's an input, which is going to be, as I say, a list. I'm not quite sure why they did that didn't take the first time. So that's looking how I, how I want it. We're going to need to work one character at a time through that Morse code playing the appropriate sound. So that's why my iterator, the for next business, is very useful. So for i equals 1 to 10, instead of 10, that's we don't know how long the Morse code is going to be. But we have an operator which can tell us that. And that's simply going to be the length of that Morse code. So for each of the characters in the Morse code, we're going to play some sound. Well, the first thing to do, I guess, is to test whether it's a dot. So that will be our if then else structure. So if that character is a dot, then do one thing. And again, we're going to use an operator which allows us to look at just one character of that Morse code string. So if, oops, wrong one. If the letter of the Morse code string is equal to a dot, then we're going to want to play a dot. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. So if the letter, the, sorry, it's not letter 1, it's going to be whatever number we're looking at. It start off as 1, then 2, then 3, and so on until we get to the end of that. If the letter is a dot, then we're going to play some music. So play 
note 60 or whatever the pitch you want for just one beat. You can speed this up, but you need to keep the numbers in proportion. So if the letter is a dot, play the note. We then need to take a small gap there. So between each character, there should be a gap before we play the next. So we will rest for one beat because it's an on and then an off um, for the sound. So that's a, you know, what just plays that note and then rests before it plays the next character or next symbol. Um, what if it's not a dot? Well, there's two options there. It could be a dash or it could be a space between um, characters if it's a string of Morse code characters. So we're going to have there if the I'm going to copy this code block and pop that in inside there. Let's make this window a little bigger so you can see what's going on. Um, so if letter is a dash, then play the note for this time long, guys. Three beats if it's a dash. And then rest for one beat. If it's it rest for yes, it is one beat of rest between those. If it's neither of those things, then we just need to rest for. I think traditionally three beats between one character and the next, or between one group of characters and the next. That should work for Morse code. So play the Morse code. Um, if and we work through from each character at a time. If it's a dot, we do this. If it's a dash, we do that. Otherwise, we have a space between characters and we rest for three beats there. Um, the only thing left is just tidy this up by um, ending that block. It will end when it gets to the end, but it's quite nice if you sort of have your code looking neat and tidy by saying stop this block. OK, that's looking good to me. So let's click OK there. And nothing happens because we've not actually run any code that yet. What we've done is created here a new block which should play some Morse code. So if we did dot 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 dash 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 dot dot dot, notice my space between those Morse code letters, um, then we should be able to hear that sort of SOS signal. Let's have a listen to that. Well, that's not working quite how I wanted it. I'm going to edit that. And oh, it is working. It's just I failed to run that particular block to set the tempo. So that's what it's like if it's running at 60 beats per minute. Now, let's hear it now. OK, let's listen to that again. It should be dot, 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 did it, it, da, 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 did it, it. which is working exactly how it should be. That's much relief. OK, so that's step one done. We can actually now play some Morse code. OK, so what we're going to do next is to create a function rather than a procedure, which takes a string of letters and converts them into their numerical representation. Now, of course, that's a bit strange because the string of letters is stored numerically inside the computer, but we want to be able to get at that inside our program here. So we're going to create another new block. And this one is going to be an operator. And what we're going to do here is take some text as a list in Unicode, which is the numeric representation of that. And rather than just being a procedure here, I want it to return that list of numbers. So I'm going to call, we call that a reporter inside Snap. So that's looking OK. Um, and what we're going to have here is the input into that function is whatever text we're interested in. So the input for that is going to be my original text. And that's going to be a text type variable. It doesn't really matter the way you do this in Snap, but it's nice to abide by the conventions there. OK, so you notice that this ends not with a stop block, but with a report. We've got to return a value, in this case, a whole list of things as the answer when that functions run. OK, how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we're going to start off by having an empty list. So I'm going to go over to variables here and make a script variable, which is an internal variable just used for the purpose of this script. And let's call that something like my Unicode list or Unicode. Let's have that. OK, and we're going to set 
that variable, Unicode, to be an empty list to start with. So we don't want anything in that list. It's a list with no items in it. And then again, we're going to use our iterator to work through the whole of our original text there. And what we have here is, again, that for next, for i is 1, 2. And again, the same idea. We're going to take the whole length of that text string as the number of times we need to go around that. So length of... You notice that these are functions too. It's just these are functions built into the operating system, or built into Snap, I should say. For i is 1 to the length of the text... And then the next item in our list could, is going to be the first originally, then it will be the second, then it will be the third, and so on. That's a variable that we're going to do. So add something new onto our set Unicode, onto our Unicode list here. And what we're going to add on to the end of that list is the Unicode of the next character from the text. So let's have a go at that. And again, an operator allows us to pull out one character at a time. So whatever letter I is, the current letter that we're thinking about, of that text that we started with is going to be added on to the end of our list of Unicode here. And we'll go through the whole of the list there. And then all we need to do at the end is report whatever is left on that list when we've worked through it one step at a time. So have a look at the code there. That should make sense. Um, I'm wanting to set the Unicode to be an empty list. I thought I'd done that. Okay, set the Unicode to be an empty list. That should be looking absolutely fine. Okay. So I'll click OK at that point and hope for the best. Again, nothing actually happens until we run some code. You'll see that down the list of operators, we have a new one, which is the text as a list of Unicode. So let's just see what we get if we ask for whatever hello is as a list of Unicode. And nothing happened there. Oh dear. OK. OK. Oh, because I'm adding letters of the text to the Unicode list. I actually didn't need to do that. I wanted to add the numbers of that. So I want the Unicode of each character. My mistake. Unicode of letter, each letter, to the Unicode list. Set the Unicode to be that. Add that to the list of Unicode. I'm hoping that... Oh, and I don't want to an empty list there. That was where the mistake was. I want to report whatever's in my Unicode list. Okay, that's looking better that time. Um, sorry about that. We all make mistakes, don't we? Click OK. And there we have the numbers which represent, let's just see that again, the numbers which represent the letters of the word hello as Unicode. You'll notice that if we type it in in capitals, we'll get smaller numbers. Okay, because they're represented by smaller numbers. If I put a space in there, so hello space world, then you'll get a 32 in the middle of the list as the representation of the space character. And there's the 32 in the sixth place to represent what that space is. Notice the two L's there, both represented by Unicode number 36. So we've converted a, a list of characters, a string, into a list of numbers there. That doesn't get us much closer to producing our Morse code, but we're on to step three now. Step three will be to convert one Unicode number into the appropriate Morse code. Okay. And again, we're going to do that as a new function. So we're going to make a block here. This is going to be an operator, which is to take convert so this will be some Unicode as Morse code. And again, that's going to return a value. This is the really clever thing about Snap, that we can return values for, um, return values from a procedure rather than just running a set of commands there. Okay, so Unicode, Unicode something, this is going to be 
the input into the procedure. So this is the Unicode number, whichever number we're starting with. And this time, rather than text, that's actually a number. Remember, we're converting a Unicode number into the Morse code symbol, and we're going to report that at the end there. OK. So same sort of idea. Let's um, see how we get on with this. We're going to need the Morse, for whatever Morse we're going to return. So I'm going to set a new variable called Sorry, I'm going to make a new variable, and we're going to call this the Morse. Uh, I did the wrong thing. Delete Morse. Okay, we're going to make a new script variable, and we're going to call this one Morse, um, which is going to be what we return at the end there. We can drag that into the block to save it for later. That was the mistake I made last time. Let's have a new variable, though, which is going to be the lookup table for our Morse code. So I'm going to call this like Morse code. And this is going to be a long table which just takes one letter at a time and converts it into Morse code. And I've got to set that up as part of my initialization here. So I'm going to set the Morse code lookup table to be a long list of what Morse code looks like. I'm only going to do this for the first tw for the 26 letters of the alphabet A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R sorry I need to be bigger S T U V W X Y, Z. Okay, and we're now just going to type in each of the Morse code for each letter in order. So that's A dot dash B C D E F G H I J K M N O P Q R S T U B W X Y and Z. And that should have filled all of the 26 spaces I have. You'll note the fifth letter of the alphabet, E, is very, very short. That's deliberately so, because E is the most common letter. Similarly, T is just a one character, or one symbol, Morse character, because, again, that's a very common letter of the alphabet. So there's our Morse code set up. Now, we're coming into this with a number, and we need to find the right position on the list. You'll recall that capital letters are... Um, smaller than uppercase letters. There's a different number for each. In fact, the capital letters start at 65 with capital A, and they will end at 90 for a capital Z. So let's. our first thing is, is it a capital letter? Is it in the range 65 to 90? And we're going to do a test there. So if the character that we're looking at oh, before I do that, we're going to need to again iterate through no, actually, we're just dealing with one character at a time here, so there's no need for a for next loop. So as I was, it's an if-then statement. Or it's an if-then else. If the character is between 65 and 90, then we're going to assume that it's a capital letter. So if the Unicode number that we're looking at is bigger than 64 and the Unicode number that we're looking at is less than 91 then it's a capital letter so to get that into our range of 1 to 26 the position in the alphabet we're going to do, subtract a certain amount from that and then look up that value in the list so we then will set that as the Morse character so set the Morse code no, set the Morse to 
what position it is on the list. Item something. Operator. Item minus the Unicode number. Take away 64 to get us down into the range 1 to 26 of our Morse code. Okay, so if it's between 64, if it's between 65 and 90 inclusive, then it's lowercase, and we look up position that letter's position in the Morse code list. If it's an uppercase character, they're in the range um, from 97 to, I'm trying to do the math in my head here, 122. So you've got a similar sort of thing going on as another if-then statement. I'm going to duplicate that, pop that in there. So if it's between 96, bigger than 96, but less than 123, that's 66 plus 26, sorry, that's, I didn't mean 66, I meant 96, um, yeah, 123. Then... We're going to do the same thing, except this time we're going to take away 96 to get us down into the range 1 to 26. The other option, of course, is that it's not any, any lowercase letter or uppercase letter of the alphabet, in which case what we're going to do there is set Morse to be just a space. We're just going to put a space in there. So there's a third option that it's not one of the acceptable characters, and in which case we'll assume that it's going to be a space. So set Morse to be a space. There's one slight gotcha that you need to worry about, that after each of these uh, patterns of dots and dashes, we want to put a space in to show that we're moving on from one letter to the next, and we can do that by just changing Morse at the end there to add in a space afterwards. So we're going to set... So once we've worked out which the Morse character is, we're going to put a space after that, before we move on to the next one. So at this point we set the Morse value that we return. Oops. To be what the Morse value currently is with a space after it. And then we report that. We return that value, whatever character we look up there. So Unicode of a number as Morse should return that. Let's have a go. We won't see anything happen now because all we've done is create a new operator inside a new function here. So Unicode something as Morse. Okay, so we can test it out. Now we thought that, um, what was it, 90, the capital letter E, let's try that, text E as a list of Unicode, E is 69, so E as Morse should return us with a dot. And indeed it does. That's the relief, isn't it? Okay, um, we can just test that for other ones. So Z is a list of Unicode. That's 90. And the Z, uh, more, Z in Morse is dash, dash, dot, dot. So let's try that. 90 is Morse, dash, dash, dot, dot. That's the relief. Now let's just take a lowercase Z. That's 122, which is what I said it was. And we should get again dash, dash, dot, dot. Dash, dash, dot, dot. That's looking good. Let's just test it for a space. That's 32, as we know, as Unicode. And let's see what 32 returns as, as Morse. And that comes up as a space, which is fine. So we've got a couple of functions there. One converts a list of text into Unicode. The next one here takes one single bit of Unicode and produces the Morse character for that. Okay. What we're going to do now is combine all three of those ideas to produce something which, with a bit of luck, will play a string to us as Morse code. OK, so let's put that into a variable to start with. Uh, we're going to make a new variable. Actually, we could do it as an input. Now let's make a new variable. I'm going to call this string. So we'll set the string to be whatever we want it to be right at the start there. Let's start with something easy, like hello, and that's what we're going to work with. Again, we're going to, um, so yeah, let's just think through this. We want to take that string and produce a list of Unicode. So let's get another variable here, 
um, and we'll call this one Unicode and we'll set that list Unicode to be the text to be whatever you get when you take that string and convert it to a list of Unicode. Let's just test as we're going here. So it sets the string to be hello, set the Unicode to be the text the string as you as a list of Unicode. And there we get the Unicode numbers which represent the word hello as um, a list. Okay. What we're going to do now is produce our Morse code one character at a time from that list of Unicode. So we're going to do a new variable which is going to be our Morse and we're going to start off by setting Morse to be an empty, empty string and then we're going to work one step at a time through our Unicode list. Again, we're going to use our for next or for to loop here. For i is 1 to the length of the Unicode. That's the opera. That's actually a variable. You could do it as the length of the string or the length of the Unicode. It shouldn't matter. To the length of our Unicode list. For i is 1 to the length of the Unicode list. And then we're just going to build up our more string as we go. So we're going to set our more string to a join. Of whatever's in the more string already. With the Unicode of the current character as Morse, or the current number from the list. So that's item i of our Unicode list as Morse. So that goes through the list one character at a time and adds on the Morse to our Morse string. Let's again have a look at that, how does it cope with hello? And there we have a pattern of dots and dashes, H, E, L, L, O, which represents the Morse for the word hello that we started with. And then our very, very last bit will be to play that, whatever's in that string, through the sound system there. So here's hello as Morse code. Which is great. Let's have a go at SOS. And let's do that in capitals. Check that that's working. It's looking good. And now let's just take a sentence and see whether it copes with that extra space in the middle there. Hello world. Okay, I think that's it now. So all of that is um, there. I'm going to save this. Um, and we're going to save that to the cloud as Morse demo. Um, so you can have a look at that. I think there's even the option to share that. Um, so here's my Morse demo. Let's share that. Are you sure you want to publish Morse demo? Yeah. Okay. And then with a little bit of luck, that's, that um, is something which other people will be able to get to. to. Oh, you want to replace one's demo? Yes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how I get you the address for that. Um, okay, it's definitely saved. Morse demo. Okay, I'm going to just have to look at that. because It's on the cloud somewhere. Project notes. I will stop the recording at this point.